Tell me about, I know a lot of your producers uh, are going to in real starter pop-ups. And what's the, what should a guy be looking for in terms of a product to do that? And what's the significance for not just NPK, but also for your micronutrients? Well, really one of the keys to a fertility program when it comes to micronutrients is a lot of retailers or co-ops to try and um, supply the needs of like zinc. Let's just use that for an example. They'll use a product like zinc sulfate, which is 30 or 33% zinc. And they might run 8, 10, 12 pounds in a broadcast application. Well, now we're talking one granule per, you know, two, three, four square feet, where you might have six or eight plants. So the chance of the plant recovering that is very minimal, if zero. The great thing about using a high-quality zinc product, and let's just use EDTA, for example, because that's really what you need. Um, in the tank and in the soil, if you're not using an EDTA, fully EDTA chelated product, it'll either bind up in the tank and or in the soil. So by putting it in your pop-up fertilizer, the chance of the plant recovering it is extremely high. It's probably, you know, 90% plus compared to under 5% if it's a broadcast application. You bet. Now, I've, I've uh, attended your seminar a couple times, and, and I tell you, I would encourage any farmer that can get away to one of your programs to, to, to uh, get to it, because one of the things you talk about are the forms that different fertilizer materials are in and how recoverable they are. One of the things I heard you say at the program just a couple days ago is that most guys are used to putting on their nitrogen in the fall and their potash and their and their uh, phosphorus in the spring, yep. which is exactly back route, backwards of what they should be doing. Correct. If you look at chemically speaking on how soils work to try and manage the variables throughout the year of N, P, and K, you should be deep banding or injecting some your P and K in the soil because they're extremely immobile in the soil and phosphates depending on bicarbonate levels and pH and that are essentially not, immo not immobile at all. Wherever you put them is where they're staying. So if you can get those some you know below the root zone in the fall is ideal and then move your nitrogen application to the spring and you want that as a broadcast. You don't want to start that down five inches because it's only going to move, keep moving down farther. Mm -hmm. So if you can start that down an inch or two, then you're going to supply the crops needs throughout the year. So yes, you should be injecting P and K in the fall, broadcasting and in the spring and we've been doing the opposite for 30, 40 well, years. Why have they been doing that? Um, to, well, to be honest, it's probably more of the retailer that's been forcing yeah. the grower to yeah. do that. Um, it's just for their time frame. They get so compressed in the spring to be doing these applications. So it's kind of on their timeline and not on your timeline. Yeah, you but, betcha. But chemically speaking, it should be the other way around. Okay, that makes total sense. Yeah.